Field number one qualifier, Leo Pritchett, who raced a 3.705 at 327.35 miles per hour for her first number one qualifier of her career. So let's talk about that first. How's it feel to get your first number one out of the way? Pretty phenomenal. I mean, it's uh, right there behind winning a race, of course, but this is do or die time. This is the time of digging deep for the chase, for the countdown, and to be number one on qualifying at the fastest, you know, one of the fastest racetracks and race conditions um, says a lot about my team. It says that they know what they're doing and it says a lot about the confidence I have in that race car. And from a strategy standpoint, it's really big. Um, you know, anybody that doesn't have their eyes painted on looks at today and goes, you got one shot to get in the field, be smart about it. From a driving perspective, you know, where are you? when those first two cars go down the track. What is the bump gonna be? How are you gonna pedal? How you know how tight is the track that constitutes how you're gonna pedal that race car if indeed that happens, but you know there's a potential that you're gonna have some weak shape and are you gonna drive through that or pedal through that? And so all these things that you think about and that run right there, there was there were a lot of things going on and we got out and they said that was a seventy and I'm like, man, I know that I had to scrub some speed with a I had, a, I had a flat front tire, and then we had a hole go out at the top end, and I'm like, man, I mean, that 70 had my hands full. But to be number one is really awesome, but we did come here to win the race. So we're starting this off on the very best foot forward. It can't get any better at this point of a Saturday night, be number one qualifier in the Mopar Pennzoil Dragster for Don Schumacher at the Dodge Nationals. Like, that's part of this entire dream, everything coming true is, it doesn't get any better than that besides winning the race tomorrow. And so we're, we're proud of ourselves. We pat each other on the back. You did not only a good job, but you did the job that you were supposed to do and we came here to do. And tomorrow we're gonna finish up, you know, and try and do the job that we came here to do and win the race. What was your feeling when they just announced they canceled the rest of the second run to give you the number one that nobody had a chance to beat you? It was honestly, it's a mix of emotions because we're true racers at heart. And I love driving that race car and knowing that when we weren't on full tilt, that we ran that 70 and that put us number one and everybody else is gonna up their game in the pack and we are too. I mean, we came out here for that, that Q2 or Q4, whatever you wanna call it, um, for the 60s. And I've never been in the 60s and I, that 330 mile an hour is out there for me to get. So that's what drives me. That's what you know gets my blood going, and I want and I wanted to get that other run in. But on the other side of things, yeah, definitely doesn't suck that for us, um, you know, that we end up in the number one position, which at this point in time has points, and that's very important to us. So a little bit give and take, um, you know, of what I felt with with the mist, but overall, I mean, happiness. Um, trust me, I'll take it. Timing's probably short because you didn't get to run, but have you heard from Papa John's? Have you heard from Fire Aid congratulating you for what you've done? Well, I didn't have my phone on me once they announced that. I came straight up here, but uh, as soon as we made that run and we were number one, I texted uh -huh. John and, uh, and, and Don to talk to him as well, and I texted Ron from Fire Aid, and of course we have all the Mopar people here, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, one person too, Bob Albrecht, that got us, you know, to race the Chicago race was very instrumental in this. And this race with Pennzoil being here, uh, those people are here. So got to talk with them in person. But there's that time between, you know, when we had that sec that qualifier and then this one where you're happy, but you know, like you're, the day's not done. So, um, so since we were officially number one, no, I haven't talked to anybody but you guys. <laughs> and my crew chief, when Todd, when Todd walked off the starting line, you know, I gave him a nice little nudge, you know, and we're like. Nice, when, you know, nice going. Well, now wait a minute. You haven't even talked to your husband? No, I was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I had not. I had talked to him prior to because his car was ahead of us, yeah. and which that's not that's not very normal. It's a fast car, consistent, yeah. um, quick Torrance Capco machine, and uh, so I'm standing next to him before uh, before that run. But no, once it happened. You should you, you see the starting line. I mean, it's a ghost town. So they they call it, man. People want to want to get ready for race day and it came straight up here. Okay. The uh, drivers in front of you really struggled to get down that lane. How quickly, as soon as you hit the throttle, did you realize that car was going to make it down and wasn't going to struggle getting down the lane? Well, uh, my first instinct, or my, you know, the first instance when I hit the throttle, we hooked up, I'm like, great. We get about 150 feet, I'm like, this this feels good. I knew we had a, we had a good 60. And I get to about 
uh, we're at 250 feet or so, and then, and I'm like, oh, there it is. There's that shake thinking that that's a shake that's gonna go up in the smoke, and I'm gonna take it to that point, and then, and then pedal like I thought about, and it went through, and I'm like, yep, here we go. This is on a fantastic run, and then, at that point at half track when the car made a big move and that groove is so it's so narrow because not a lot of cars have been down it at all and so it's it's very finicky given there's a lot of traction and um so it, it, it had washed a little bit and i've never had a dragster where i'm full throttle right now i'm hitting 292 miles an hour at half track and my steering wheel i'm like at a nine o'clock i'm almost at an eight o'clock like this and I'm like, but we're on a good run. Like, I'm, that's that's commitment. I'm sticking to it. Like, we, we get this one shot. So, all right, we're, we're, we're still in the groove right there. And then it put a hole out as soon as I had got it back. And I'm like, but we're almost there. Like, this finish line has never been farther away. <laughs> Let's get there. And then taking your hand off at 327 miles an hour while you're like this inside the dragster. But that's what I mean. There was a lot going on. Um, and so from A to B, and I know everybody hates that instance, but really it was like A to F. Like there are so many things that had happened. So it makes this num first time number one qualifying experience really special for me, because uh, the crew did their job, crew chiefs did their job, sponsors are here, I did my job on the track, and that's what, that's what gets me going. Like I said, just waiting for tomorrow so that we can finish our jobs. All that within 3.7 seconds. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Did the flat tire occur during the run or after the run? Well, uh, if we knew what happened before the run, then we would have caught it. So, I really what they, we put them at 80, 80 pounds, and that, that right front was below 50. So, I'm going to say, I, I honestly, with the ambient temperature, and that was a brand new tire that we had put on, so there was leakage happening there somewhere. And by the time you have all that force on the front wing, and you're trying to make a move, and the car's not reacting because one tire's you know, flatter than the other, really um really makes your job a little bit more difficult than a, you know when they say we just go straight i mean not all the time <laughs> um, so obviously we're, we switched that out and that was fine and you know there's always something that's happening there's always something um looking forward to to be better at and that's why it's so crucial for everything to be so perfect at every single time especially when you think you only got one run to make which is what we had what do you hope the weather will be tomorrow well, I do not hope for sunshine, to be totally honest, okay. because it's so, with the conditions and the mist, and we're in the valley like this, and the clouds seem to like to part us here, that if we have consistent sunshine, it's going to want to seep water out from the track. So if we can have a nice cloud cover, low temperatures, I mean, when we ran that 70, track temp was 69. If we could do that again, that's what I want, because we know how to go fast on a racetrack like that. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm hoping for tomorrow. I don't mind the cold. We just came from St. Louis. We sweated our butts off mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and we're here bundled up. Uh, conditions that we know how to run in and what we proved today, that's what I'm looking for. Yes. And no rain. And rain. Today, minus, minus the rain. 